Roman Louise from Minerva, and I am here today to sew along with you this elegant and timeless Vogue dress in a truly scrumptious luxury crepe in a blush colour. This pattern is a great make for your more confident sewers or adventurous beginners. This fully lined dress has some truly gorgeous style details, such as princess seams and a close fitting bodice with a raised waistline. This pattern has several variations, including several sleeve options and a flared and straight skirt. It is truly a pattern for all occasions. I'm thinking it's good for bridesmaid, mother of the bride, and of course, bride. Today we are making dress option A, a flared skirt with some wonderful flutter sleeves, and the thing all handmade dresses need, pockets. This dress can be made in a variety of fabrics, the packet recommends linen blends, crepe, tropical wool and broadcloth. But I can't help feeling we could add some things to that list. Maybe a nice light cotton lawn for a summer floaty vibe, or a bright and bold brocade for your winter parties. What do you folks think? This Vogue dress is available in sizes 6 to 22. I personally find that Vogue patterns run a little smaller than I expect, so I normally choose the pattern packet with the size above included, just in case. Of course, everything we talk about today is available on Minerva right now and will be linked down below and will pop up throughout this video for your ease of shopping. So without further ado, let's get stitching. For this delightful pattern, we are using an equally feminine fabric, this dusky pink luxury crepe. This smooth and silky fabric is going to add a fairy-like float to our full skirt and flutter sleeves. For the lining, we are using a liquid satin. This 100% polyester light satin has a great drape and it has such a reasonable price. It's great for projects on a budget or as a fabulous lining to give an extra level of lavishness to our makes. Also, this satin is so lightweight, it's not going to affect the drape of our main fashion fabric. Here at Minerva, we offer a fabulous service of matching thread to the fabric you're purchasing. Simply add the fabric you must have. No, it's not a want, I need it. <laughs> anyway, add the must have fabric to your basket and then tick the matching thread box to make the thread appear in your basket. Just like magic. To complete our shopping list, we will need a light iron-on interfacing, a similarly coloured invisible zipper, hook and eye, and a matching thread. Once all our pattern pieces are cut out, our first job will be to iron on our iron-on interfacing to the wrong side of our lining pieces. Now our bodice lining pieces are nice and safe and secure, we are going to stay stitch the necklines and princess seams of our fashion fabric. This is going to prevent weird pulls and gaping further down the sewing line. Now our bodice pieces aren't going anywhere, we can start construction. First things first, all our seams are sewn with a 1.5cm seam allowance and we're back stitching at the beginning and ends of our stitch lines. Now the safety torque is out of the way, we're going to sew the two centre front bodice pieces right sides together, leaving a 1.5cm gap between our stitch line and the top and bottom of our bodice. This will help with later construction to ensure a clean finish. We repeat this step on our lining pieces. Once our centre front seams are ironed open, we work our front princess seams with right sides together. We match top and bottoms and then notches, easing everything together and pinning with normally an unnecessary amount of pins. Again, this step is repeated on our lining pieces. After they are sewn together, we clip the seam and press them open. For princess seams, it is a good idea to use something like a tailor's ham. Because the seam is curved to fit the bust, it's often tricky to get that seam pressed open on a flat ironing board. A pressing ham is one of those odd things that you accumulate while you sew that you're not sure you need until you have it and then you can't live without it. We have some wonderful examples for sale on Minerva that you can add to your basket while browsing our wonderful crepe selections.
Now we start work on our back pieces, matching top, bottoms and notches and easing in fullness and sew together. Repeat this step on the lining pieces. Once our back pieces are sewn together, we clip the seams and press them open. We now start to bring our bodice pieces together, attaching them on the shoulders. Repeat this step on the lining and then iron those seams open. Now we can bring our fashion fabric and lining together. We're going to start work on one half at a time. First we start on the left side, attaching the two bodices right sides together, matching the shoulder seams and notches. When we get to the centre front, we want to add a pin where the stitching is and moving the seam allowance out the way, we're going to stitch right up to the centre front stitching. In the back of the bodice, sandwiched between our fashion fabric and lining, would be an excellent place to sew the beautifully woven Minerva Makers label. Now we sew all along that top edge, securely back stitching at the centre front. Then, once the left side is complete, we move the centre seam allowance to out of the way of the right side and sew along the top right edge. As I am adding sleeves, I'm not worried about the lining peeping through the armholes. However, if it's something you're a bit worried about, trim the armhole lining by just, a, by just millimetres, so the lining is a tiny bit smaller than the fashion fabric. Then match the seam edges up, and then when you turn it right sides out, the lining will very lightly pull the fashion fabric under so we don't get any peeping lines. There is some wonderful inspiration for the Vogue 8997 dress by one of the fabulous sewists that posts on Minerva. The creative cinema sewist made this absolutely fabulous floral version of the timeless Mambo Italiano dress worn by Sofia Loren. Isn't this just fantastic? Another stunning make is a prom dress made by Johnny Angel, showing just how easy this pattern is to hack, with a completely elegant skirt. I am also very impressed that the lace is hand sewn. Now we thoroughly clip our neckline seam, as they are very lightly curved. We then understitch the seam allowance to the lining. This will ensure the lighter lining doesn't decide to wiggle round to the outside. Once our neckline is neatly pressed and the right way out, we are going to baste our armholes with a long machine stitch, with wrong sides together matching seams and notches, ensuring the basting stitch stays within the seam allowance. Now our bodice is all prepared, we can start work on our rather elvish flutter sleeves. With right sides together, we're going to sew our side seams and add some gathering stitches to the top of our sleeves to help ease them into our armholes. Before we add our sleeves to our bodice, we're just doing a small narrow hem. I've done this by overlocking the edge and then folding that to the wrong side. Of course, a zigzag stitch or a double fold narrow hem will work. We now pin our sleeves to our bodice, right sides together, matching our notches and underarm seams. I actually found that the sleeve was too small for the bodice. I'm unsure if there was a cutting error on my part because crepe can be a slippery little what's it to cut out or if I cut out the wrong bodice piece but this was easily fixed by cutting more of a curve into the sleeve to make the armhole wider and now no mistakes in sight
Once all sleeves and bodices are tidied, we sew the sleeve into the bodice. I find it easiest to work inside the armhole so I can make sure I'm not catching any tucks or gathers that will show on the outside of my sleeve. Once both sleeves are attached, I'm overlocking the seam allowance, trimming the seam allowance as we go, or alternatively, a zigzag stitch about a quarter inch into the seam allowance from the original seam line and then trimming the spare seam allowance. I just want to take a quick break here at the halfway mark to talk about the wonderful community here at Minerva. We really want everyone to take up something crafty. At the top right of the post, you'll be able to follow Minerva and keep up to date with offers, new releases, general fabric prettiness, and of course, tutorials, sew alongs, and top pattern picks. Let us know what you would like to see next. Comment below, we love to hear your thoughts. This is our progress so far. We have a fully lined and pressed bodice with some gorgeous flutter sleeves. We can now start work on our skirt pieces. With all the main skirt pieces, we want to repeat this step on the lining pieces as well. First things first, we're going to sew our centre front skirt pieces right sides together stopping 1.5 centimeters from the top of the skirt again to ensure a clean finish Once our centre front seams are sewn together, we can then attach our front side seams right sides together to our front skirt pieces, matching the notches. This is our skirt progress so far. Ain't she pretty? If you're keeping all your seam allowance, you will need to clip the top section of the skirt where it curves quite heavily, or you can trim your seam allowance to about a 1cm width. Now we start work on the very back of our skirt. Leaving the centre back unsewn for the zip, we sew right sides together on the back side seams. Once both our front and back sections are made up, we can start work on the glorious pockets. First, with right sides together, we stitch the pockets to the skirt, leaving a 1.5cm gap at the top and bottom of the pocket similar to how we sewed the bodice. Pockets have actually been around as part of women's clothing for quite a while. There are mountains of evidence showing women using a tie-on pocket during the 17th century. There are trade cards from the 18th and 19th centuries that list pockets as items available from a haberdashery. Even little girls' dolls are seen with pockets, showing just how much they were part of everyday use. Have you ever seen a Barbie with a pocket? Me neither. There are examples of tie-on pockets being made from all sorts of bits and bobs lying about. There are very durable ones made from leather, some patchwork together from scraps left over from a bigger project, and wonderfully embroidered examples that would have taken forever to create. This picture shows the fantastic embroidery on an 18th century pocket.
We now sew the pocket bags right sides together. We start from the stitch line on the skirt and work round the pocket, finishing at the stitch line at the end, keeping the seam allowance free. For the lining, I'm going a little rogue from the pattern instructions. I'm not including a pocket in the lining because I don't want to line my pockets. So I'm stitching the side seam of my lining right sides together. Of course, this is just my preference and I found this method easier than the instructions. If you want to go even more rogue, you don't have to line the skirt at all. Just make the bodice lining up and then when the skirt is attached, slip stitch or stitch in the ditch the lining to the bodice. Now our lining is sewn and our pockets are attached, we can start work on the side seam of our fashion fabric. We're going to stitch from the top of the skirt to the top of the pocket, making sure to keep the pocket seam allowance free. Repeat this step on the side seam under the pocket, ensuring to keep the pocket side seam free. My favourite fun pocket fact is the strange amount of pocket thefts there were during this early time. Because they were tied on, they were very easy to nick by passing ruffians. However, they were also incredibly useful if you wanted to commit some crimes as well. There is a case concerning a Jane Griffiths. She was caught at Christmas in 1777. She was found having two live ducks in her pockets that she had stolen. Also, imagine having pockets big enough to fit two live ducks in. Life goals. Anyway, I should probably get on with some sewing now and stop looking at pocket-based crimes. Once the pockets are ironed towards the front of the skirt and all our skirt seams are well and truly pressed open, we are going to finally bring our bodice and skirt together. Moving the bodice lining out of the way with the right sides together, we're going to line up all of our seams, similarly to how we sewed the bodice lining and fashion fabric together. We're going to leave the centre front seam allowance free, stitching up to the centre front stitch line. While using fine fabrics, it is a good habit to get into to use silk pins, and lots of them, to get the fabric to stay still for one darn minute. Also, a fine sewing needle will ensure you don't pull at any threads. Although some crepe can be difficult to work with, this Minerva Luxury Crepe is such a lovely weight and so sturdy, it was very low maintenance to work with. Once our waist seam is sewn, we are going to repeat that step on our bodice and skirt lining pieces and iron all waist seams upwards. Then we can get ready to put in our invisible zip. I like to baste my zip in first to ensure the waist seams line up and especially when working on a stretchy fabric it can prevent weird fabric pulls. It's also an excellent opportunity to try on the dress to see if I need to make any adjustments before the tricky to unpick zip goes in. Using my invisible zipper foot I'm working down both sides of my dress making sure not to actually catch the zipper teeth. Once both sides of the zip are sewn, we are going to finish the centre back seam. 
Working from the bottom of the zip, we're going to stitch down to the hem of the skirt. I like to try and get as close as I can to the zip stitch line. If you start too far away from the zipper, it can create an awkwardly placed dimple. Now we are on the last lap. We are going to bring out our lining so it's right sides together with our fashion fabric and sew it down the zip tape to create a nice neat finish, making a kind of zipper sandwich between the lining and fashion fabric. Once both sides of the lining are sewn to the zipper, we are going to finish the lining back seam in the same way we finish the fashion fabric. Once our zip and back seam are sewn, we are going to press the centre back seam open and press on top of the zip. Now all we have to do is hem our skirts, making sure to hem the lining shorter than our fashion fabric and sew in our hook and eye and we are done. And there we have it, we are left with the ethereal gown that is fit for any season depending on accessories, but I cannot wait for the summer when this dress is truly going to shine. This luxury crepe is a wonderful option for this pattern. It has a luxury finish and even though it's a crepe, it's such a good weight and it isn't see-through, which I find is always handy in a fabric. There are so many fantastic crepes available on Minerva, from the budget-friendly crepe de chine with its glorious shine, to some truly heavenly Liberty London floral crepes, and then some winter-worthy wool crepes. I personally love working with crepe. I find it such a hard-wearing but floaty fabric. The drape and lightness of the crepe complements the shape of the dress so well, and I feel like a princess, which is how I want all my dresses to make me feel. The low back adds a fun mystery and elegance, and the fullness of the skirt makes it perfect for dancing. Here at Minerva, we love to hear your views. What would you like to make with this fabric? What fabric would you like to use for this Vogue pattern? Any questions, comment below and we'd be happy to answer them. And don't forget, Minerva Craft Club members get a 10% discount for 12 months when they sign up. And when creating a free account, you'll get a welcome present of a discount coupon. So join us with our lovely community of makers, follow, comment and like, and we'll see you next time.